as the story begins to unfold, it starts out with a strange object that appears in outer space. This cubic object, which is four-dimensional, is partially in outer space and... Hyper space, 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 space... Shortly, three unidentified objects fly out at a hypercube. One of these triangular UFOs will lead to a marble, a marble of dimensions with powers and abilities from the fourth dimension and beyond. Later, this marble of dimensions becomes known as one of the greatest legends of all times. Hypercube Man. Eventually, the three spacecrafts enter into the Earth's atmosphere. As the triangular UFOs fly over the Midwest, they fly over a town known as Seansdale. As the triangles in the sky continue to fly over Seansdale, the townspeople below start to notice. Hey dude, look up there. Wow, man. The country town girl next door? Oh. Oh my gosh, what are those flying triangles in the sky? The country town hipster? Hey man, Maria Corey, those UFOs up there look like an alien invasion, man. The hipster's good, buddy. Hey, Mike Man, dude. Those triangle UFOs are kind of weird, dude. Too bad those UFOs couldn't give me some money out of this ATM, dude. Dude. The best friend of the upcoming Marvel of Dimensions. Hey, John Johnson, those triangle UFOs are kind of weird, but I gotta take a picture of these. Well, I gotta take a picture of these three interesting UFOs and show my good buddy, Brian Wade. I take out my new smartphone here. Here it goes. Okay. 
Yeah, it's just trying to still pull it out here. Man, I gotta get this pulled out and take a picture of it. Here, okay. Here's that one, that one. And here's that one. Okay, I think I'm good now. My good buddy Brian Wade will really like this. Scott, be careful of taking pictures of those UFOs. Scott, be careful. Scott Anderson! Thanks for your concern, Maria. But I got a picture of all three of those UFOs to show my good buddy, Brian. The UFO spectacle was even on the news. Good evening, this is Dan Davidson with XYZ Headline News. Three UFOs were spotted flying over Shawnsdale today. This is the biggest sighting since Roswell. At the time the UFO news is going on, the one that is about to become the Marvel of Dimensions, Brian Wade, is observing it as well. Look on the news. Oh boy. Boy, oh boy, with this UFO sighting on the news, this is quite the summer before my senior year of high school. Check this out. Later, Brian's mother drops by, Marilyn Wade. Okay, Mom. Later, Brian and Scott talk. Hey, Brian. Ever since school's been out this summer, I've been working on my photo talent. I took a picture of those UFOs today. That's the greatest thing I have ever done. Cool, Scott. Cool. Very cool. That really pretty girl you've been eyeing on, Maria Corey, was there. She was wearing something really spectacular today. Plus, John Johnson was there, that guy that says, hey, dude, a lot. And his buddy, Mike Mann. Hey, before the summer's over with, I'm going to build up the courage so I can ask Maria Corey out. Also, was the others. I saw one of the UFOs fly down while the other two flew away. That is another thing I'm going to do this summer. I'm going to see if I can find that landed UFO. Hey, Brian, let me show you a picture of those three UFOs I took on my smartphone. Ooh, let me check that out. I would like to check that out. Hey, Brian, let me show you a picture of those three UFOs I took on my smartphone earlier today. Let me just first turn on the phone here. Now I've got to slide across. See these UFOs? They look pretty interesting. They're very triangle. How cool, Scott. I definitely have to check out that landing sometime soon this summer. How cool. As we segue from those two mellow teens hanging out in Brian's room, and boy, it is getting way too late, we go back earlier in time that day when the three triangular UFOs were flying over Seansdale.
Pre-warning, pre-warning, prevent this maintenance needed. As Hyper Trilons 2 and 3 start to fly away, Uved and Uzed notice problems with their hypercore and other things as well as they look at their shift's schematics. Here's a translation of their shift's schematics in their Saurian Vosilapter language as they segue to their conversation about the hypercore situation. A moment later, Hyper Trilon 1 starts to crash land. Just before Ukid lands, Hyper Trilon 1, Trimatrix informs him that he is in the middle of a hyperdimensional flux. back to Scott Anderson's visit with Brian. Earlier in the visit, they watched the news in his room. Okay, Scott, there's some interesting UFO news, and I got it on the computer. Let me go to the XYZ website here. Just let me click here. Okay, Going back to the UFO good spot now. today. Okay, let's watch here. One of them here. seems to have flown down from the sky. It may have headed somewhere out of town, but nobody really knows where it is. The other two were spotted flying away. It's a good thing I took a picture of those when I could. Tomorrow I might see if I can try to find those UFOs. And I go with you, Scott. I've always wanted to see aliens. Let's go tomorrow, Brian. Okay, cool. Next day, as Brian Wade goes to his car to pick up Scott Anderson for their UFO sighting, he runs across Maria Corey. Hi, Brian. Hi, Maria. What a pleasant surprise. Good to see you here. What are you doing here? Going to see Laura Little next door to do your music lessons as usual? That's cool. 
Me and Scott Anderson are going to see that landed UFO. Be careful, Brian. Will do. Hey, Maria is wondering if we could go out sometime. I'd love to. Great, that sounds cool. Later, when Brian and Scott go to find that landed UFO, which happens to be Hyper Trilon 1. Brian, I've checked many different sources, including a UFO site on the internet. And after checking on the search engine, we should stay on this road, and hopefully with any luck, we will spot that UFO. I'll keep my eyes peeled. Hopefully we can see some aliens today. Plus, Scott, pull your head up and keep an eye out, too. It only looks like we have one person in the car, plus it looks kind of funny. Guess what, Scott? As I was going to my car today, I ran across Maria Corey. She's going to Lord Little's to do singing lessons as usual. I finally got up the courage to ask her out, and she's willing to hang out with me sometime. That's cool, Brian. Very cool. As they keep going, they start noticing a strange light that turns on and off intermittently. Hey, Scott, do you notice those funny lights? Hey, Brian, I guess we're getting close to that UFO. Wow, those lights are kind of strange. And even with my sunglasses on, they're very bright. They have a weird flashing sequence. Hey, even though those lights are very bright and I don't have my sunglasses on, they don't seem to hurt my eyes. That's really weird. You're right, Scott. I think the UFO is right over there. Hey, Scott. You got your head up now. Looks like two of us are sitting in the car now. Hey, Brian, I stick my head up when it's important, but yeah, the UFO's right over there. Boy, those are really flashing lights. We gotta check this out. <laughs> Meanwhile, back at Hyper Trilon 1. Trilon 8 trips, we know you're doing what you can, but transport me out of here. You can't, I can't do that right now. The cookie device is preventing quantum entanglement transportation. This is having other effects on the hyperdimensional flux, like enhancing the effects of the flashing lights. A little later, when Brian and Scott finally reached the center of those flashing lights, which happens to be Hypertrion 1 phasing in and out of its cloak while in the middle of the hyperdimensional flux. Hey Scott, I'm glad we're here finally checking out this UFO. I hope some aliens pop out. Hey Scott, where are you going? Hey Brian, I gotta go back to the car and get my smartphone so I can take a picture of this. Oh no! Oh good, there's my smartphone right here by the pencils here in the car like I thought it would be. Let me pull it out here and take a picture of this triangular object before it decides to fly away. Let me turn on here. And yeah, I gotta get this adjusted. Yeah, okay, now I can point and shoot here. Just make sure that I'm taking a picture of this. This will be a good thing for a newsletter. I've always wanted to get stuff in a newsletter. This time I gotta make sure I take a picture of this while it's landed real close here. Okay, yeah, get a right angle here and everything. Yes, okay. Yeah, I think I got this picture. Okay, good. Okay, okay, good. I gotta take a picture of this. Okay, hey, didn't I just hear Brian just uh, yell just a minute or so ago? Hey, Brian, where are you? Hey, Brian, Brian. Hey, Brian, you out there? You okay? Hey, Brian. <laughs> It's hard to see out there with all these lights. As Trimatrix continues to try to transport Ukid, Ukid and Brian are contained in a hyperfield within the flux. This changes both of them in a hypermolecular way, with each having a different outcome. <laughs> Ha, 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 ha,
Shortly after the two outcomes come to be. Boy, after a flashlight experience, I feel bigger and stronger. I noticed after looking at some of the reflective devices in a strange place, I look a little different. Hey, who is this strange being standing next to me? Greetings, human. I look here. Hey, boy, let's not be afraid of my pound on WXM. Hi, Uked. I'm Brian. I'm from the nearby town called Chonsdale. What and where is this place? Is this a UFO? Uked, will it be explained to Brian what it has happened? Brian, I have Time Matrix, an AI computer for the spacecraft known as Hyper Time Mod 1. This craft, along with two others, came to this dimension on an accident after running out across a hyperstorm. Will it be longer on some other things as well. Will it be showing you a video of our history and things? Wilson will blame it and okay it. I will need you to do testing on most of you to see what effects the hyperdimensional functions had on both of the view. Plus, I am a bit upgraded and that they may after the hyperdimensional flux, and I will now be known as Hyperbatrix. So as Trimatrix, which is now going to be known as Hypermatrix, shows a video, elaborates to Brian in great detail. The AI computer explains to him that they come from a parallel dimension. Also, it tells him that a race known as Velociraptors evolved into an intelligent race of beings instead of humans. The first picture it shows in the video is a picture of the alternate Earth with a continent known as Pangaea. Right, and here's a picture of Earth in our direction. It only has one continent known as Pangea. Instead of seven continents like we do in the Earth in your dimension. Next, the video shows a picture of the Velociraptors in their cave age. Brian, in this picture, this is what we used to look like in our stone age. After that, it shows a picture of the Velociraptor's modern civilization. Alright, as we can clearly see, here's a picture of our current civilization thread. The following shows a picture of all three trilons in the middle of the hyperstorm. Brian, here's a picture of the hyperstorm that all three of our trilons were in. Eventually, the picture of the hyperdimensional flux shows up. And here's how this child was affected by the hyperdimensional flux. <laughs> if 
Finally, a picture of Brian Wade being caught up in the middle of the hyperdimensional flux as Zoo Kid tries to get out of Hyper Trilon 1. Finally, Brian, here's our picture of you being crowded up into hyperdimensional flux. <laughs> Me, Brian Wade, always wanted to see aliens. How interesting. Cool. Cool. And just one last thing Hypermatrix shows on a video right before the hyperflux effects testing for Brian and UCAD. Sorry, Eric. This is a visual mathematical model of a Tesla rock. A four-dimensional hyperspeed that we use to go in and out of hyperspace with our hyper -trilons. We will also use this Tesla rock, this hyper cube, to go in and out of hyperspace as well. Unfortunately, the hyperstore falls us out of one of the Tesla rocks. Right, as we look at this hypercube, no one remember one thing. Mathematics is the basic and abstract tool that is universal in every dimension. This is our exponential. Right, we have the Shortly after, Hypermatrix scans Brian for the hyperflux testing. Brian, right, right, we're gonna start scouting you for the hyperflex testing. <laughs> Next, Hypermatrix starts scanning UCAD for the hyperflex testing. If you return to UCAD, I am going to start scouting you for the hyperflux testing. <laughs> Later, after all the hyperflux testing is done. Brian, this is Hypermatrix. I am communicating to you telepathically through the Vietnam Mobile Private by direct conversation. I have found when testing you after the hyperdimensional flux. You have more hyperdimensional powers than you can, including. We do it in outer hyperspace through a hypercube known as a Tesseract. You are literally the hypercube man. You probably got affected this way after the hyperdimensional flux continue from this universe and Ukraine listen. Plus, it probably affects humans different than with those sorians. Don't tell everybody that you have these hyperdimensional powers. If they fall in the wrong hands, they can be a very dangerous weapon. In the right and just hands, they can be a power used for good to help people. So use our powers wisely. Brian, or as I should call you now, Hypercube Man. Wave your hand around me and use the power of your hand. 
And it will blow up here. <laughs> well, do Hyper Matrix boy, this is one of the weirdest experiences I've ever had. Yo, 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 it's still alive, Hyper Kill Man. Well, here it goes. Well, Hyper Kill Bad, here is the airborne that you use for your Hyper Suit. This bird audio in a hyper suit will automatically be put on you. Okay, Hyper Matrix. Let me just grab this really quick. This should be fun. Shortly after Brian takes the emblem, he transforms into Hyper Cube Man as the suit gets put on him. Wait, this hyper suit is cool. I feel like the greatest man alive. I feel like I could be a hero, even a superhero. I do feel hyper powerful enough to be hyper cube man, like you say, hyper matrix. If only my buddy Scott Anderson could see this. Use your powers wisely, hyper cube man. Remember, you are supposed to be a force for good. Will do, Hyper Matrix. Remember, Hyper Cube Man, what your power should be used to help you can find a way home. Okay, Hyper Matrix, I will definitely try to see if I can find a way home for Ukid, as well as my other endeavors as a superhero. I will find a way home for you, ooh kid, it must be horrible to be stranded in this universe. But I will definitely find a way home for you, along with the many endeavors I will have as a superhero, ooh kid. Very good, Hyper Cuban, very good. You should open it to the two of them and run them. I will not try to get you to the field to find my way home and for long. My freaking people will run up and let them bend to your turn to help home so long. For the love of your money. Bye for now too, ooh kid. I will help you find a way home as well, ooh kid. I can stand on the proven network. To let you both know, Hyper Charon 1 will be now known as the Dimensional Chamber as we try to find UK away home. <laughs> Hyper Q Man, continue to stay and recover as Brian Wade, and would be Hyper Q Man when needed. Also, when you get back to your vehicle, don't let your party know what has happened and what have turned out. I am now open the now Tesseract get it ready for you to go back to your party. Will do, Hyper Matrix. Ready to go through the Hyper Cube. A moment later, the Tesseract gateway starts to open. Right after Hyper Cube Man goes through the gateway. As Hyper Cube Man goes through the Hypercube through hyperspace. Boy, this is so cool! But I gotta keep my identity secret though.
So as Hypercube Man goes out of this side of the Tisseract Gateway, he slows down to a normal time dilation, or has it appeared that several hours have gone by since he got caught up in the hyperdimensional flux? Only a few seconds have gone by for Scott Anderson and the rest of the world, which was explained by Hyper Matrix. As all that is going on, Hyper Trial on One, which is now known as the Dimensional Chamber, which is comprised of Hyper Dimensions and Tisseracts, disappears into hyperspace. Right after, Hyper Q Man returns back to the car with Scott Anderson and his Brian Wade identity. Also, he uses his mind powers to hypnotize Scott so he can forget about the UFO sighting and uses those same powers to adjust Scott's smartphone so he won't discover that picture till a more suitable time. I had a strange dream. I dreamt that we were going to find those UFOs and I was going to the car to get my smartphone. What happened, Brian? I thought we found that UFO when we saw those strange flashing lights, but it turned out to be a mirage. I guess with all that driving, you fell asleep. It's been a long day. Later, those two buddies, Brian and Scott, drive home. Sometime later, when Brian and Scott went back home from their UFO search, Brian goes back to home sweet home to his family to have a barbecue style dinner and they talk about the day's events. Here is a sample of some of their barbecue. Boy, does it look delicious. Yum, yum. Hey, Brian, I'm glad you're back home. Welcome to the barbecue, son. Hey, Brian, how's your day been today? How's your summer been? Fine, Dad. Scott and I tried to find that land of UFO, but didn't get anywhere. Before that, I saw Maria Corey, and I asked if she wanted to go out sometime. She said yes. That's great, Brian! That is right, Brian. Your mom and I met at your age. Since it's going to be your senior year of high school, you should do things like ask Maria out to the prom. You should, Brian. As far as that UFO is concerned, you are wasting your time. You should do something like get a summer job, like possibly a newspaper route, or even mow the lawn. Laura Little needs her lawn mowed next door. Tomorrow, Laura Little does need her lawn to be mowed. Okay, Mom. Understand, Dad? After Brian and his dad, Brandon Wade, and his mom, Merlin Wade, have dinner, the news comes on talking about the UFOs again. This is Dan Davidson. Welcome to the 6 o'clock news, and thank you for having us in again. Talking about that UFO that landed, there were some flashing lights that could have been the UFO, but nobody knows for sure. Meanwhile, back at the Dimensional Chamber, Ukid works with Hypermatrix to try to contact his dimension. This is Ukid. I have arrived at Rumble in Hypertrome of Wood, which is now changed into the Dimensional Chamber. Come and try Central Control. Very clear, I'm doing clear, I'm doing clear, 
Move camera, we will have proud storage camera. I will have three proud storage greater next every ball or hyper strength. <laughs> I'm going to stay on high level metrics. We found that it's in your world. We all know that we're proud of the by human form and it's more than a civilization. And so, give me a good chance to run the world around the world. Stay on that. Be careful, it'll kill it and come back soon. As Uke transforms into human form, human clothes will automatically be put on him. Hmm, thinking to myself, I am now in human form and I'm also wearing their clothing. I can now go out into their civilization, the human civilization. I can't go through a Tesseract like Hypercube Man can. I would just evaporate like a puff of smoke. So I will have to get some dimensional shielding. Hyper Matrix. Turn on the dimensional shielding and prepare it for the Tesseract Gateway. Well, go down and we'll kill it. Hyper Matrix, I'm thinking of a human name. I think I'll drive it from the last solo of my Velociraptor Saurian name, Uked. The name Ked. That will be the last name. And if you take off a little bit of that syllable, which in their language, a little bit of the last of the three letters, and this have E-D, it'll be Ed, and that'll be the first name, which is a common enough name in their civilization. So the first name will be Ed, and the last name will be Ked, Ed Ked. And that will be my name for the human civilization. And I will be known as Ed Cad and look this way and dress this way. So continue to prepare the Tisrak and the Dimensional Shielding. Hyper Matrix. Well, go down and we'll kill it. The next day, as Brian Wade goes to Laura Little's to mow the lawn, he runs across Maria Corey again as she's doing her singing lessons. When Laura Little says hi to Brian, uh, uh, Hi, Brian. Uh, hi, Brian. It's good to see you. Uh, darn it. I wish I would start smoking when I was younger. It's hard to clear my throat and it sounds like a guy now. Uh. Uh, I may not have a good singing voice anymore, but it's not too late to teach others like Maria to sing well. Uh. Hi, Laura. I'm here to mow the lawn. That's a pretty cool picture of a guitar. Did you get some new drumsticks? That's a cool drum head. That's some pretty interesting notes here. Hey, Maria's singing. She sings real good. She should be a star. Uh, thanks, Brian. After Maria's done with her singing lessons, you can mow the lawn. Uh, let me finish my coffee now. Uh. Hi, Brian. Hi, Maria. <coughs> hey, Maria. It's going to be Saturday night tonight, and there's a real cool gig tonight at the Stars and Stripes restaurant. Did you want to go out around 7? Yes. I'd love to. Shortly after Maria says yes to the date, she gives Brian her cell number by utilizing that tap technology by tapping her smartphone on his. Cool, Maria, I'll answer your phone call to get your phone number. Okay, answering here. Great, I'll text you before I pick you up tonight. <coughs> Seriously, I gotta stop this bad habit. <sighs> I gotta dump this in the ashtray for the final time. Brian, you can vote a lot now. Okay, Laura. Shortly after Brian takes his hat off and one of his shirts, he is mowing the lawn. Boy, I'm really earning my keep this summer. Little does Brian know that one of his high school boys, the town hipster, Mike Mann, is watching him from a distance.
Hey man, I'm gonna park my bike right here by this wall, by this tree, and look at this dork, Brian Wade. I'm gonna text my good buddy here, John Johnson, see if we can find that guy and bug him later tonight. Hey man. As John Johnson is downtown Seansdale trying to get money out of the First Bank ATM as he did when the UFOs first flew across town, he gets a text from Mike Mann about Brian Wade. Hey, I got a text from my buddy Mike Mann Dude. He's talking about that real wimp Brian Wade. I'd really like to get that dude tonight. Dude. Hey, dude, with a bad comb over, could you give me some money out of your ATM, dude? Dude? Hi, I'm Joe Smith. I work really hard for my money. I'm not going to give money to a young punk like you. I'm Joe Smith. I work hard. Later that night, when Brian and Maria are on their date at the Stars and Stripes restaurant, presenting the rockin' cool guys, News field reporter Pete Paul on vocals. Yeah, 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 yeah. News anchor Dan Davidson on guitar. And your waiter Steve O'Brien on drums. I'm glad I got my hair trimmed on the side since before the date. Hey, what an interesting salad you're eating right now. Hey, the rocking cool guys. They make a really cool ambience for this restaurant here. Their music is really great. How cool. Hey, Maria, let's do a toast for more good times to come. I'd love to. Cheers, Maria. Well, here it goes. I'm going to drink this soda here. This is a neat cola. <sighs> hey, dude. Hey, dude. Hey, dudes. Uh-oh. It looks like Brian and Maria State's in trouble. The high school boy, John Johnson, just showed up, and he brought his buddy, Mike Mann. Hey dudes, oh how sweet, little Brian is on a date with Maria, dude, ha 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 ha, wow man, you two are too cool, ha 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 ha, wow man, hey dude, I got her, ah, Brian. hey dude, be quiet Maria, John, man, John Johnson, man, I'll get Brian while you get Maria. Take that, Brian, take that, man. Brian! Right after John Johnson and Mike Mann take Maria Corey, Brian Wade pretends to be knocked out with the fight. Ah, oh, Mike Mann got me. Hmm, thinking to myself, using my telepathic powers, I know that John Johnson and Mike Mann wanted to hurt me, but especially hurt Maria Corey. I gotta think fast and change into Hypercube Man. Shortly afterwards, Brian changes into Hypercube Man. I gotta say, Maria, quick. I'm gonna get you, John Johnson and Mike Man. Boy, those two will be surprised when I see a change in a hypercube man after getting out of hyperfield. Luckily, I'm in a faster time dilation here using the power of my hand. Here it goes. Who are you, man? 
I'm Hyper Cube Man. Hey, dude. Oh, no. Oh. Ah. Not long into the fight, Hyper Cube Man wins the fight. And John and Mike leave while Hyper Q Man talks to Maria Corey. You guys better leave Maria alone. Hey, dude, let's get out of here. Yeah, man. Are you all right? Yes. Yeah. Who are you? Just a friend. You can call me Hyper Q Man. Where's Brian? Is he okay? I'm sure he's well. Take care. I gotta go. As Hyper Q Man leaves the Stars and Stripes restaurant, he goes on his pursuit for John Johnson and Mike Mann. Shh. Hopefully when I get through my Tesseract as usual and get to the other side of town, I can beat John and Mike to the punch. Shh. As Hyper Q Man goes to the other side of town by the way of the Tesseract. Shh. Hey, there's John Johnson and Mike Man. Hey, is that a bank robbery going on down there? Hey man, John, there's that crazy Hyper Q Man guy. Let's get away from here. Hey, Mike Man, dude. There's a couple of dudes robbing the first bank here of Sean Sale, dude. Let's get away from this too, dude. Hey, Mick Brother, across the street here is Sean Sale's first bank. You get the ATM and shoot that. I'll shoot the window and see if we can rob this bank. Okay, let's see here how I can point and shoot here. Yes. Hey, Mark Brother, it is probably getting late enough to rob this bank. I'm gonna see if I can get some good aim here. Let's look here across the street here. Let's see if I can aim. Okay. Okay, Mick, I got my trusty shooter out here. I'm gonna see if I can point and shoot here and shoot the window of this bank. Hey, who's that crazy guy up in the sky flying? That's really weird. Let's get out of here before we get caught. Mick. I got my gun out of here. Oh no, you're right, Mark. That's a strange guy. It looks like he came straight out of a sci-fi. Maybe he came from one of those UFOs. We better run. Oh no, I'm shaking. I gotta get out of here before we get caught. It gets zapped or something. Oh no. As the Jones Brothers bank robbers try to get away, Hyper Q Man catches up with them and seduces them. I got you guys! You won't be robbing a bank tonight! I'm gonna use the power rays from my right and left hands. They'll serve as a weapon to stop these robbers. <laughs> Brother, the gig is up. Gotta get out of here. Oh, Mark, brother, we gotta get out of here before the cops get us, especially this fine guy. Officer Bruce Miller with Officer Kendrick were approaching some bank robbery suspects that seemed to be zapped by that super guy flying around town. Come in, Commander Venezuela. As John and Mike continue to run away from that Marvel Dimensions known as Hyper Q Man, they come across a little house cat. Yeah. Hey, dude, cat, get out of the way. Yeah, man, cat. Get out of the way if you know what's good for you. Man, meow. Meow.
Hey, there's a cat stuck in a tree over there. Hey, little kitty, I got you. Kitty, 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 kitty. Meow, I got you, kitty. Meow, hey, kitty. Hey, kitty. This is Linda Little's pet cat, Tabby. Laura Little's little daughter's pet cat. I'll go back to her house to get back her cat. Then rush back to get those bullies. Shortly, Hyper Q Man returns the cat to Linda Little. Yeah. Thanks, Hyper Q Man. Sure thing, Linda. Shortly before Hyper Q Man goes back to downtown, a seemingly strange individual streams across the main streets of Seansdale. Hey, who's that strange individual zooming across town? Hey, is that Ooh Kid? He seems to be phasing in and out of looking like a human being. Hey, he ran into that vehicle. I better get out of the way before it falls on that man and crushes him. So right after, Hyper q -Bad prevents that vehicle from falling on that individual, which happens to be downtown merchant Joe Smith. Oh. oh, what's going on tonight? It's been a weird night. First, a weird beam guy knocks me out of a high performance sports car. Then, shortly after that, a weird superhero guy prevents it from falling on me. I've been working too hard. I must be a workaholic. I'm imagining things, hallucinating things. I gotta leave town. I'm this merchant Joe Smith. I should be Mayor Joe Smith of this town, Chonsdale. I gotta leave this town. Things are getting too hectic. Uh. As Uchad continues to stream across downtown Seansdale, as he faces in and out of his human identity as Ed Cat, he goes into a hideout and runs across as the two boys, John and Mike. I gotta find a room while facing in and out of my human identity so I don't pull over the cougar. I gotta go through this hideout. Greetings, fellow humans. I am Ed Cat, and I was wondering if you could help. Hey, man. Hey, dude, with weird hair and phasing into a dinosaur. I'm John Johnson, dude. Hey, Mike, dude, I'm by the door of this hideout. Let's build this place, dude. Hey man, odd phase guy, I'm Mike Man. Hey man, John, let's get out the door of this hideout before this phaser phases us into something weird, man. That's what I essentially tried telling you, dude. Let's definitely bail this place. Yeah, man, let's definitely bail. Hey dude, I don't want to get zapped into a dinosaur. Hmm, good to meet you, John Johnson and Mike Man. Don't be afraid, people, and leave out the door of this hideout. I need help with the research of this town for my project. Hmm. Even though I went in this hideout real fast, I hope no one saw me come in here as I was having a hard time with the phasing. I see the face back into my original story and identity as Ukin. I can't seem to go back to my human identity as Edkin. Not long after John and Mike leave the hideout, Hyper Q Man catches up with Ukid after following the residue trail that Ukid has created with his identity phasing that Hyper Q Man has been sensing with his hyperdimensional powers. Huh. It seems like I can find Ukid here. He seems to have changed into a human, and I'll find him in the hideout. It seems like he's having a 
problem was phasing in and out of his identity. Huh, I should contact Hypermatrix in a hypertelepathic way and ask him what I should do about this. Also, I should let it go with those two jokers, John Johnson and Mike Mann. I can always catch up with them later. I better contact Hypermatrix in a faster time dilation so I can make a split second decision. Well, here it goes. Contacting Hypermatrix. Contacting Hypermatrix. Contacting Hypermatrix. Contacting Hypermatrix. This is Hypermatrix. Greetings, Hypercubab. Hypermatrix, I have found Uked in a hideout in downtown Sonsdale. He is phasing in and out of being a human being. What do I do about this? Hypercubab, it sounds like Uked's hyperdimensional power, so he got from the hyperdimensional flux. We're going already, so I'll have to put him in a hyperspirit so I can come up with a cure. Hyperkubel, I use your hyperdimensional powers and put dimensional fluidity around Ukeb. <laughs> and I'll put a hyperspirit in the hideout. The hyperspirit will be partially in the hideout and partially in hyperspace. Put it in the hyperspirit till I can find a clear. After that, hyperkubel, go to the retro chamber. Since so it'll be in a faster time dilation, we could try to come up with several different cures for Ukulele. Also, I can go on an overview summary of your hyperdimensional powers. Will do, Hypermatrix. Hypermatrix, I'll create dimensional shielding by using my hand rays. I'm going to use the power rays from my right and left hands. This hyperspirit hyperspace will serve as a containment field while we put you in stasis, Ukid, until we find a cure while you're still phasing in out of your identity uncontrollably as Ed Kedd. After Hypercuban puts Uked in the hypersphere, he goes to the dimensional chamber to have a regroup meeting with Hypermatrix. Hypercuban, after going over several different scenarios to help Uked, we still need to do more research. Hypercuban, to go out of some recap of Dr. Hyperdimensional Powers. Perfectly, you're three dimensional. But the energy of you is four dimensional or higher. Let's go to super strength. The ability to fly through regular three dimensional space. And also to fly through hyperspace by using the Tesseract. And also other ways. And since you are hyperdimensional with your powers, with hyperdimensional energy, that's why you can read minds. Or you can use the hyperdimensional stuff to use rays like through your hands and eyes. Hypercubab, since you can go in through hyperspace with the Tesseract and other ways, you can weave in and out of the third dimension like a piece of clay. And eventually you'll be able to weave in and out of the third dimension like a fish can go through water. So go back to your date with Maria Corey, so she doesn't know she was. Sure thing, Hypermatrix Maria must be worried about me. It'll be good to go back on a date. 
So as Hyper Q-Man goes through hyperspace as he leaves the dimensional chamber, he goes back in time earlier that night to start where he left off with his date with Maria Corey. After Hyper Cuban goes through the time warp and goes back to the Stars and Stripes restaurant, he changes back into Brian Wade. I gotta change back into Brian Wade before anyone notices. Hey Maria, are you alright? Did John and Mike leave? Yes, Brian. Are you alright? Yes, Maria? You missed an amazing guy who called himself Hypercube Man. Oh. Hi, it's me, Steve, your waiter again. Are you guys okay after that fight? I tried as fast as I can to put my tired shirt on again. After being the rest of man, the rock and cool guy still has a ruckus. Who is that guy in the green and yellow suit? Damn it, I gotta get better gigs than this. I'm thinking I might be a late night show host. I'm thinking I might call it O'Brien's. Hey, there's never a lead when you want one. I gotta contact my manager, Jim Jacob, about this incident. Where is Jim anyways? Hey, my phone is ringing. I wonder who this could be. Hey, it's my manager. Let's see what he has to stay here. Hey folks, this is what my manager says. Hey Steve. This is your manager, Jim Jacob. I've heard something happened at work. Are you and the guest all right? What happened? I may come down there, Jim. Also, this is what they also said, folks. P.S. Also, Steve, I have been hearing you want to be a late night TV host. Good luck with that and keep your day job. There is already a late night guy called O'Brien. That manager, he is such a discouraging guy. Hey Maria, even though me, you, and Jim have been in place in a month, this ever happened when you were server Maria? I guess I'm under a lot of stress after all the excitement has happened tonight. Sorry about that Maria and Brian. You guys are okay, right? Yes. Maria and I are okay. Things are fine now. Here's a tip for your troubles tonight. Not too much later, Pete Paul does his field news reporting. Hi, I'm Pete Paul for News 10. Tell me all what's happened. These two guys we know were bothering us, and then the superhero, who was quite a marvel, saved us. He calls himself Hypercube Man. Sounds very interesting. Even though I saw a good part of what went down while performing with the Rock and Cool guys with anchor Dan Davidson, which unfortunately had to go back to the news studio after this, and your waiter Steve O'Brien, I had to put my tie back on and get a scoop about this Hypercube Man guy. So are you guys all right? Yes. That's good to hear. Reporting from the Stars and Stripes restaurant in downtown Seansdale, field news reporter Pete Paul. Later, Dan Davidson talks about the incident. Earlier this evening, a strange man in a green and yellow suit seemingly to have superpowers had a fight with two others in a nearby restaurant. Some say this marvel of a superhero that is called Hypercube Men may be related with the UFOs spotted recently. As Brian's senior year of high school progresses toward the end, he talks with his parents, Brandon and Marilyn Wade, at his home, home sweet home, about what he'll be doing after high school. Plus, they talk about the upcoming prom. This fun time root beer is my favorite root beer. I'm glad I picked the oranges and lemons from our trees for a snack here. Well, mom and dad, after high school, I will be studying communications with Scott Anderson. Also, I will work at a TV news station with him in LA. Brian, I'm proud of you. You have really come a long ways since Boy Delon and Laura Littles. This field with Scott looks like it may be good for you, especially since you wanted to see those UFOs last summer. You have a very curious mind. That is right, Brian. Thanks, Dad. I guess I do have a curious mind, Mom and Dad. Oh, and don't forget to pick up your tux this Saturday for the prom. I mean, at least it'll be much better than that date you had last summer. And you and Maria Corey have been dating pretty well these days. 
It will, Mom. It really means a lot to me to go to the prom with Maria Corey. After Brian picks up his text on Saturday, he goes to the senior prom with Maria Corey. The theme of their class prom is Glitter Snow Road. Before the prom festivities get too far along, Brian uses his hyper Q man powers to prevent those two menacing boys, John Johnson and Mike Mann, from ruining the night with Maria this time. Hey dude Mike, as I peek through the sliding gym door here since we're crashing the senior prom, let's be more successful at bugging dorky Brian with his date Maria, dude. Hey man, John, as I peek through his door, let's do it man. Hey Maria, I'm glad we're finally at the senior prom together. You got a real nice dress on. Thank you, Brian. And you look really handsome in your tux. I'm glad we're on a date, Brian. Hey Scott, it's good to see you tonight. You look really cool in your tux with your date. Hi Scott, hi Katie. Hey Brian, it's good to see you Maria too. You look pretty dapper in your tux tonight and Maria looks absolutely gorgeous in her dress and things. This lovely young lady I'm with tonight is Katie. Hello. So you're Scott's date. Hi, I'm Brian. So your name is Katie. Oh darn, those two boys, John Johnson and Mike Mann, just showed up. Hey Maria, I'm gonna make sure they don't bother you this time. Be careful, Brian. Hey, dude. Huh, I really gotta do something about these boys. Hey, man! So, Brian goes in a faster time dilation and subdues John Johnson and Mike Mann so they don't get a chance to hurt anybody. And he does this so fast that the human eye can't see so that no one will notice without going through the trouble of going into his hyper Q man suit. That's a lot better. Brian! Are you alright? Hey, Maria and Scott and company. John and Mike won't be bothering anybody for a while. Way to go, Brian. It's good that you got rid of those bullies tonight. Hey. Hey, Principal Carter. Take those two guys out of here. Hey, this is Principal Carter. You two nerds, John and Mike, are out of here. You're going to serve some serious detention. Hey, dude. Hey, man. Gotta move on, guys. Yeah, Principal Carter, get rid of Mike Ban and John Johnson. We don't need those boys in this prom tonight. Yeah. Hey, Brian, guess what? This night's getting sweeter and sweeter. I got some good news. I finally found that picture on my smartphone that I thought I lost about those UFOs that I took last summer. And I put it here in the Sean Seal newsletter. And I finally got my article in the newsletter like I always wanted to. And I think that's really cool, man. I'm so excited about this newsletter thing that I'm stuttering. Plus, I've been accepted at a college in LA so I can study journalism and communications so I can be a news reporter someday. That is really cool, man. Hey, Scott, it's really cool that you got your article finally in the high school newsletter and you got a picture of those UFOs that you took last summer. Hey, Brian, I got a copy here of the Sean Steele High Newsletter. Let me pull it out here and show you the article that I'm very proud of. As you can see, here's a picture of the ships, the article, and a picture of me. How cool, Scott, how very cool. This article that Scott Anderson has in this newsletter paves the way for a great TV news career for both him and Brian Wade. I think the coolest thing about my outfit tonight are these cool sunglasses I bought earlier today. These are really cool. Hey, Maria, let's go dance. It's our favorite song. Yes, I'd love to. Maria, I'm having a lot of fun tonight. Are you? Yes. Maria, just to let you know, you are very talented with your singing, as well as a very beautiful lady. You'll go a long ways in life. Thank you, Brian. I love you, Brian. I love you too, Maria.
Going back to home sweet home, as Brian Wade's senior year comes to a close, Maria Corey says goodbye to him just before going to L.A. to pursue her singing career dream. Brian, I guess this is time to say goodbye. I'm nervous and I hope to make it big. Laura Little thinks she can find a music contract for me. Don't worry, you are very talented, Maria. Plus, Scott Anderson and I will be in L.A. leading our way into TV news. I'll miss you, Brian. I'll miss you too, Maria. Later, Brian says goodbye to his parents just before going to L.A. to pursue his career. Hey, Brian, let's wait for your mom to come back out here to the backyard patio area to say our goodbyes. Well, mom's back out here again. Well, mom and dad, it's time for me to go with Scott to L.A. to prepare for our careers. I guess it's goodbye for now. Brian, your mother and I wish you the best. Oh, and yes, Brian, we're going to really miss you. A few years later, when Rhea Corey has made it big and she has her spotlight concert in L.A., she runs across Brian Wade and they get reacquainted. This concert you're having tonight is incredible! Shortly after the concert is done, Brian is backstage talking to Maria. When you're all done tonight, did you want to get coffee later and touch bases with things? Yes, I'd love to. The next day, just before Brian Wade starts his first day of work at NBC Mega Broadcasting Company, he runs across one of his mentors, news anchor Dan Davidson. And this all happens while Brian is having a glass of Bags beer at the TV Street Bar and Grill. Hey. Hey, Dan Davidson, my idol, just like Pete Paul. Good hey. to see you here. I'm just nervous because my first day of work at NBC Studios Mega Broadcasting Company. Well, can I see it over here? Yeah, go ahead. Hey, this is pretty interesting, you know what? I was reading this. You're Brian Wade, huh? Yeah, I'm Brian Wade. Yeah, my buddy Scott Anderson took a picture of those ships uh, a little while back, last summer. You know, but we cool. never saw the aliens or anything like that. That's pretty interesting. So how do you like the station so far? Well, it's my first day. I haven't started. I just had the job interview. That's my first day with my buddy Scott Anderson. Cool. Hey, aren't you dating that girl, Maria? Yeah, I'm dating her. I was a little bit. We kind of broke it off a little bit because we're going different ways, but I should be able to see her in LA because she's practicing on her singing career. Cool. You know that famous down too, right? Yeah, I saw you in the Stars and Stripes restaurant. You're pretty cool. With <laughs> Pete Paul and our waiter, Steve O'Brien. Right on. What are you drinking, Bags? Yeah, Bags beers. It's pretty yeah. interesting, isn't it? It's one of my favorite beers. <laughs> it's like my favorite root beer. It's good time root beer. Okay. So, are you you still married right now and stuff like that? <laughs> you mean is there a Mrs. Davidson? Yeah, is there a Mrs. Davidson? Oh, that was a divorce one. Okay, what's she like? Oh, Lord have mercy. Do you have to go there, kiddo? Okay, well, I'm thinking because if I ever get married to Maria, some girl of my dreams, is the thing I'll be like. You want to know what my ex wife is like, kid? Yeah, what's she like? All you gotta do is just look right down the gutter, baby. Okay. Cheers. Okay, cheers. As we go to NBC Mega Broadcasting Company, Brian Wade and Scott Anderson start their first day with this TV station. And just before orientation, Brian talks about his date the night before with Maria Corey to Scott. As Brian and Scott are in the office conference room for orientation, they see a video of Maria Corey's concert from the night before. Hey Scott, here's Maria Corey's concert from last night. Cool, Brian, cool. Maria Corey's Spotlight concert was very successful last night. Reporting from NBC3 is what to see. This is Pete Paul. Hey Scott, it's good to see you at orientation today. Maria's concert was a real blast last night. It's good to see her again. Plus, we went on a date afterwards. How oh, cool, Brian. Oh, I better take my sunglasses off because our new boss is coming, Mr. Lopez. Hello, Brian Scott. I'm Luis Lopez. I'm the TV News Editor here at the station. Welcome aboard NBC. We're going to be going over a few things here during your orientation. 
Going to Uked's dimension, Uved and Uzed, are with Tri Council in their capital city of Vasasoria, talking about the situation in Brian Wade's dimension. So as this marvel of dimensions continues to develop as a heroic legend known as Hyper Cube Man, he enters into his amazing super layer, the Dimensional Chamber, a chamber composed of tesseracts and hyper dimensions. As the tesseract gateway opens. Hyper Q Man goes through. Right after Hyper Q Man enters into the dimensional chamber, he notices that something strange is really going on. Hyper Matrix, what's going on? Hyper Q Valid, you believe as the Dimensional Chamber are facing due to a fuck's claim go dark router. They're throwing matter into a cream of the hyper dimensional fucks that gave you your powers. This is all right, my fair. As I told you in the past, Hyper Q Man, the symbol on your emblem represents the Tesseract. <laughs> and the colors on your emblem are suit symbolize the colors of the Vortex Tesseract that you go in and out of. <laughs> Dark Rattery is the opposite force of the hyperdimensional powers you have in the Tesseract you go in and out of. Wait, it was your weakness and mind. How are we gonna get through this? The dimensional chamber finally turns into a single Tesseract as it goes through the dark matter cluster. <laughs> 